Hi guys. Um, so today um, we are going to be diving in a little further with landscapes. Um, so hopefully you've done the previous assignments um, that were supposed to kind of give you a glimpse into how do you deal with drawing a landscape, how do you break it down, um, how can you look at a reference photo um, and use that to kind of jump in and quickly lay out uh, a landscape. But what we're going to do today um, is a little more look into sort of the mechanics of uh, building a landscape. So um, one of the main things that we're going to focus on is building depth. Um, which is going to be super important when you're doing a landscape, especially if you want it to be believable. Um, so if you want it to feel as if your 2D space, your 2D flat paper surface, whatever it is you're working on, um, feels 3D or has the same effect that this photograph does. Um, so when we're dealing with depth, what we have to think about is three things. Um, well, more specifically, three spaces. So you want to have a foreground, um, which is going to be, um, if you imagine being in this field, um, you standing right in front of these um, poles that make up a fence. So they're going to be the things closest to you. Um, now the next space is going to be the middle ground. Um, so that's still an area um, that's relatively close to you. Um, so you can still see some of the details. So for example, and I don't think you can see it in the video, but um, I can still see part of the tree trunk. Um, I can see some of the fencing back here, patches of grass. Um, so it's it's not right close to us, but we, it's close enough that we can still see details. Um, and it does extend a little bit further back, um, depending on how deep your space is. Um, now, once you move past that, um, you get to the background, um, in which case you're going to start losing a lot of detail. So these are going to be past the areas um, which you can clearly see. Um, so that would include, say, this um, part of the hill slash mountain back here, um, where you can see all the trees that make up that part of the area um, have kind of all blended together. Um, and if we go even further back into that background, because we have a lot of depth, um, very deep um, space in this photograph, um, the mountain range back here um, loses all detail and it even um, loses some of its saturation so you can see it's paler um, than the rest of the image because of the atmosphere. Um, there's so much um, stuff in the air that it's actually getting in the way of how we perceive um, that space back there. But um, if we keep in mind the basics of um, things being bigger and more detailed in the foreground and then becoming less so as it moves back to the background, um, we're going to get that effect of deep space. Um, so those are the three things we want to focus on. So um, our foreground, the middle ground, and then the background. So we're, we're going to work on um, working from this reference photo to um, create a landscape down here. Um, now what we want to do is start by kind of breaking up our space. And so what I like to do if, if I'm working with a reference photo is kind of give myself some guidelines. Um, so I like to look for the middle of my image um, and if I'm working from a printed source um, like this photograph I can literally mark it um, where the middle of each side is and I can use that to put everything in the right place um, however if you're not you can just kind of hold your finger up to where the middle is and use that um, as your guideline so if you're working from a phone or from your computer you can just hold your finger up um, and where that middle section is and use that um, like I am these marks um, which you'll see in a second so um, I'm going to start by putting in some basic shapes. Um, that's always what you want to do in working with a background is kind of break it into simple shapes. That way um, you can then go in and put the objects that exist within that space um, in a lot more easily if you have things to compare them to. 
So um, like in class, um, you can follow along exactly, or if you want to change the shapes of the things that we're putting in here, or the different, or maybe you want to put a fence, maybe you want to put a tree instead, um, you can follow along that way. Um, so this will just be like the demos that we do in class normally. Um, so um, I'm going to start with the background. Um, and everyone does this a little bit differently. Um, if you look at any landscape artist or any artist in general, they're going to do this differently. So whatever works for you, this is what works for me. Um, but I like to give myself kind of a starting point. Um, and this just seems the easiest um, because um, I have a good way of measuring it. Um, so what I'm going to do is make some guidelines on my actual drawing as well. And so what I can do is say the top of this mountain is just a little bit um, above our halfway point. It's not quite halfway between the top and the halfway point. Um, so when I go over here to mark it, I'm going to go a little bit above my line, not quite halfway between the top and my halfway mark, um, but just a little bit lower than that. And so that'll give me my starting point from a mountain. And now, because we're working from a reference photo, you could um, try and be super exact and precise, but a lot of times when people are doing landscapes, um, it's more about the feeling of the space or capturing um, the atmosphere. So the exact ridge line isn't super important, um, especially if you're going to later on edit it and change it and you're not just doing a study of that space. Um, so it's not super important that you get the exact dip of every single thing. So you kind of just want to make a little ziggy line um, until you reach um, where it ends. So if I'm looking at my reference, um, the end of this mountain ridge is just past the halfway point across the top. So I'm going to go all the way until I hit um, just a little bit past my halfway point on my box. Um, and then from there, I can go in and drop in um, this middle ground. Um, well, it's sort of middle ground, sort of background. It's it's kind of the turning point between the two. Um, but if I look over here at my reference, it's very close to the top. So I'm going to come over sort of in the same spot. And then I'm just going to kind of swoop down, making sure to come over and hit the line that I just made and then continue all the way over. Now I can look and if you're being really precise, again, just a little bit below our halfway point so I can come over and then meet up at the top. Now again, you can be super precise if that's what you need to do. If not, just be real. You just need a little swoopy. It should kind of slope down and then go up a little bit. Um, you don't have to be super precise unless you want to. Um, but now what we have is our background and then sort of the turning point between our background and our middle ground. Now, um, what I'm going to do to kind of make breaking up the space a little bit easier is I'm going to come in and put in this line right here, um, sort of the top um, of the tree line in the middle ground and that'll help me get my house in the right place um, and then that'll give me my middle ground as well as my foreground. So um, if I come and look at my reference, it's just a little bit above where my um, halfway point is so I can come and start there. Um, and if I look over here, um, it's about halfway between my midpoint and um, the bottom so I can make a little mark there and now I know um, where my lines are going to go so I can just kind of connect them is that my midpoint? No, this is my midpoint. and again I'm just going to do a little sweepy line you can be more precise if you want um, I tend to not be super precise with my reference photos because I end up changing them so much. Um, but at this point, you should have three sections. Um, you should have your background, this sort of middle to background turning point, and then this area down here, which is going to be our middle ground um, and our foreground. Um, 
So the next thing that I'm going to do is put in these poles that make up the fence. Nope, go away. Go away, kitty. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to start with this one over here because it's really close to the edge and it'll be easy to put in. Um, and so if I look, it comes a little bit below my halfway point and then it just kind of curves a little bit away from the corner and then I can just bring the other side down. And again, don't worry about it being too exact, too precise. You can always change it and say it was your artistic choice to make it fatter than it actually is. No one will ever know. Um, so I'm going to then go in and put in this next one. And again, I'm just, I'm eyeballing. And once you get used to this, you really won't have to actually go and draw all the little marks. Um, you'll be able to start eyeballing it. So I'm looking at how far away it is from the top here. I'm also looking at how far away it is from my midpoint and then kind of dropping it in um, from there. So he's not perfectly straight, so he's gonna be a little curved, but he's also a lot thinner than this guy over here, so we don't want them to be the same size. Um, and then for the last one, I'm looking, he's just a little bit away from the top of um, that ridge line. He's almost touching. Our second pole curves away from it a little bit. And then again, I'm just going to bring it down. Um, and now we have very clearly foreground, middle ground, all the way into our background. Um, and so from here, um, all you really have to do is start um, throwing in all of your little trees and your little details. Um, so I'm going to focus on putting in um, these trees here. And I'm going to be really loose with their shapes. I'm just going to kind of roughly blob them in because that's what trees are. They're blobs. If you work too hard on making them um, too precise, too exact, they're going to look fake. So you want to kind of just block in a few little blobs, wiggle your pencil around a little bit, um, and you'll get that sort of tree line. And don't forget to overlap them so you can see here I've hidden this tree behind these ones here, and that'll also help make it feel a little more realistic. Now, if we were going to go in and shade all of this, you would do some mark making back here um, to really build in that space. Um, but we're just going to focus on laying it out today. Um, so I'm still going in. I'm kind of blocking in the basic shapes of these trees. Doo, 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 doo. It's pretty good. Um, and then we'll be good to start putting in um, this house detail. Um, so what I want to do real fast is put in this last little chunk that sort of is the middle ground and then behind that it really does kind of become background because it's so less detail. Um, so I'm going to block those guys in do, 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 do. because it gives me a little bit of road back here which will help me get um, that house in the right place. So he kind of comes down like that doo -doo -doo -doo, behind the tree. Okay, um, so the next thing we want to do is block in a house. Um, and with this, um, it's really up to you how you want to draw that house. You can be really exact with it. Um, or you can just play with the shapes a little bit, thinking about the fact that there's a house here. Um, so just kind of draw in something sort of house shaped. Um, just to give the impression that there's something going on there. Because this guy's got a lot going on. Oops. Put that too far away. Okay. So we've got sort of a house shape here. There's a lot of little bits and pieces to it. Um, so you can simplify. Um, should really have the actual photo up that would make it easier um yeah okay so we've got some sort of house shapes we're going with that um and because it is sort of in the middle ground you could still see some of these little details like the chimneys and the uh, windows on the side of the house um so you could throw those in if you wanted to but don't add too many details because it is um not in the foreground, so we are losing some of that detail work um, that we would want to have up in our foreground. Okay. 
sorry, I had to add in a little shading. Um, all right, so we've got our foreground, we've got some details in the um, middle ground. Oh, wait, we gotta put in some trunks, I forgot. Um, so let's throw in some trunks here real fast. Um, and just throw in some lines. They don't need to be anything fancy um, because it is in the middle ground. The detail of these trunks is gonna be very um, limited um, in what you can see. So just kind of plop some stuff in, and there's actually lots of foliage down here, so it's hiding a lot of the trunks. Um, yeah, I think that's good. And if you're a little worried about how the bottom of the trees look, um, you can always add little um, blobs to kind of um, act as foliage, and I'm just wiggling my... Um, pencil around um, to kind of mimic the appearance of bushes and that'll give you some space to kind of hide the bottom of those trees if you're not sure what to do with them um, oh there's some over here too let me put that in real fast do 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 again there's some foliage back there do 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 some trees do 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 Okay, so we've got our foreground, um, we've got um, our middle ground, and then we also have our background. Um, so most of what's going to happen in the background will come from shading. Um, so you really don't want to put any details back there or else it's going to mess up the depth. Um, it's going to tell your brain that this is actually closer than it is. found that out the hard way. Um, had a professor tell me that I put too much detail on a wall and so it messed up my depth. Um, so you don't want to put too much work back here in terms of like mark making or um, doing any sort of texture. It's going to throw everything off. Um, so I think the last thing that we should do um, just to keep this kind of short is um, just throw in a few last little details like maybe um, some lines for the fencing here so it's clear that this is fence. Um, so this is um, some wire fencing, um, which I don't think you can see in um, the video, but um, it isn't straight. Um, it kind of dips and curves. So when we put this in, you don't have to worry too much about it being perfect um, because the fence itself isn't actually nice and straight. So we're just gonna throw in a little line. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And then there's another one up here. And it kind of goes whoosh and up here. Did I make this guy too short? Maybe a little bit. I think I made him too short. Oh well. Um, and that kind of drops down. And then we have another one here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There's some wrapping some wrapping and then it goes off again um, ta -da. all right so um, we have created depth and at this point this is where you would go in oh my gosh hold on one second This is where you would go in and start um, adding details. Um, so you could add a little fencing here. Um, you could do your shading. Um, so you would want to look for all the dark areas and make those nice and dark. Um, so this is just where you would start adding your final touches. Now for your assignment today, what I would like you to do um, is on the sketch that you've been making, um, I want you to go in and add in a few details that are not here um, and put one in the foreground, one in the middle ground, and then also one in the background. Um, so for example, um, you could have a little bird. Doo, 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 doo. sitting on your um, wire, so that would be in your foreground. Um, you could put some cows um, hanging out 
in your middle ground um, and you want to think about how big the thing is um, compared to what else is there so we don't want to draw our cow too big or else it would mean that he was as big as a tree so I'm thinking about how big he would be um, in comparison to a tree um, so I'm thinking he um, would probably be about this size um, maybe a little bit bigger um, but you don't want to go too big um, or it'll throw off your um, illusion okay um, and then lastly throw in something in your background um, maybe you want to be real funny and have you know a giant person wee, hanging out over your mountain um, or you could do something a little more normal maybe you have some of those little cell towers do, 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 do. Keeping in mind that um, even though they are real far away in the distance, you're still going to see them because they're pretty big things. Um, so that's what you're going to do today. You're going to um, add one thing um, in each of your areas, foreground, middle ground, and background. Um, and you can play around with scale. Um, so maybe you put something giant in your background. Um, it's up to you. But again, one thing in your foreground, your background, and... Or, sorry, your middle ground and your background. Good luck.